at this point. <clears throat> and they were just all bad. So we'll see that. 1 Kings 16. The first point is consequence. There's consequences for being bad, for sinning against God. And they will suffer the consequence. And then we'll also see chastisement. <clears throat> it says in verse 1, Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying, For as much as I exalted thee out of the dust and made thee prince over my people. See, it's the Lord that put him in that position. Over my people Israel, <clears throat> and thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam. You followed after the wrong guy. In fact, this guy, um, Baasha, God used him to deal with Jeroboam. And then yet he's going to do the same thing that Jeroboam did when he was the one that took care of, of Jeroboam and, and the things that God had him do to remove Jeroboam's next of kin because of what Jeroboam did. And yet he's going to do the same thing, and then there's going to be the same punishment for him. Sometimes <clears throat> we don't learn. We see what happens to somebody that did wrong, and then we follow that, that path. And yet we're able to see the problems that happen to them in their life. We, we see the, um, the problems with the addictions or, or the problems with the immorality or the problems with, the, um, with their life when they sin against God or drift away from God. <clears throat> and yet if we're not careful, we follow and do the same thing. And that's what Baasha did. It says, and as the Lord exalted him out of the dust, he says, <clears throat> you are nothing. I put you in that position. And so all he had to do is follow the Lord, just like us. <clears throat> as Adam was created out of the dust of the ground, just like how the Lord created us that we belong to him and we should serve him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because not only did he give us life, but he also purchased our life by his, with his blood. But no, he walked in the way of Jeroboam. Instead of walking in the way of the Lord, he walks in the way of Jeroboam. <clears throat> and has made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. Well, there's going to be consequences for that. And those that are evil and ungodly and sin against God and do not want to repent, do not want to turn to the Lord, there's consequences. The ultimate consequence, of course, is hell. Well, they didn't want to have anything to do with God, and then they're going to be eternally separated from God, which is eternal damnation or eternal death. And has made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger. With their sins. Behold, I will take away the posterity of Baasha, his future, his, uh, those that are going to come after him, his children, and the posterity of his house, and will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Him that dieth of Baasha in the city shall the dogs eat, <clears throat> and him that dieth of his in the fields shall the fowls of the air eat eat so the same judgment that was promised against the house of jeroboam in first kings 14 verse 11 happens to this this guy even though god used him to be the uh, the vessel to carry out the chastisement upon jeroboam he does the same thing jeroboam does and the same thing happens to him and and his future his future children it was considered a special disgrace to have your dead corpse desecrated and kept from proper burial. And so he says that they are going to be killed and they are going to be disgraced. The dogs will eat them and the fowls of the air. Will, in other words, their bodies will not be properly buried. <clears throat> they, will not ex they will not have a proper burial. They'll be left out there and then for the scavengers. <clears throat> Verse 5, now the rest of the acts of Besha and what he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? 
So Beesha slept with his fathers, and we talked about that also last week, what that means, and was buried in Terza, and Elah, his son, reigned in his stead. And also by the hand of the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, came the word of the Lord against Beesha and against his house, even for even for all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord in provoking him to anger and the work of his hands in being, <coughs> in being like the house of Jeroboam and because he killed him. And of course, he's the one that killed Jeroboam. Now, God had used him to do that, but still in the way that he lived his life and the things that he did, he still had to reap what he sowed for um, the things that he did. Verse 8, in the 20 and 6th year of Asa, king of Judah. So it, was, it would be giving you the date of these kings of the north by telling you that these kings of the north, they were reigning during the time period of Asa, who was in the southern kingdom. And so it just gives you the time frame. And Asa, I believe, reigns for like 30-something years. And in that same time period of one king in the south reigning, you have, I think, seven kings of the north just going through them. Ooh. <clears throat> it says, in the 20 and 6th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah, the son of Baasha, to reign over Israel in Tizra two years. In hope of every king is to pass the throne on to his son and to further a lasting dynasty. But because he was wicked, his son is not going to reign very long. In fact, he's only going to reign for two years. Verse 9, and his servant Zimri captain of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Terza, drinking himself drunk. Maybe he would have been aware of it. Maybe he would have been able to see what was happening. But because he was so drunk, he was vulnerable. He drunk in, a, in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Terza, and Zimri went in and smote him and killed him in the 20 and 7th year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. <clears throat> so even as Baasha gained the throne through assassination, so the son of Baasha was assassinated by Zimri, an officer in the army of Israel. You reap what you sow. He did not have the blessings of God on his life. And so then we see how it affects his children. And we see that because of the life that he lived, he passed on that same attitude towards his children. And just like how Jeroboam that caused Israel to sin, you have Baasha following in that same path. And Baasha wasn't even blood related to Jeroboam, but they had the same kindred spirit that they worship false gods. Those golden calves that Jeroboam uh, built, the one in the, in the northern area of the northern kingdom and the one in the very south of, of the northern kingdom, that was a problem. It, it caused the nation to sin against God and to become idolatrous. And it just got worse and worse. And we'll see one of the worst kings just in this very chapter in the northern kingdom. <clears throat> so we see consequence. There's consequences for living an ungodly life. And we see is, uh, and I don't want to pass this up, where it says that this this king he ended up getting drunk you know the bible has a lot to say about that and we live in a day and age where even a lot of christians are getting involved with drinking alcohol you know the bible has a lot to say in fact i believe that the sin that is mentioned most in the bible more than any other sin is the sin of drunkenness you just look at what it did to noah you know, and it says in, um, I'm going to read a passage of scripture that people use to, uh, to say that, you see, it's okay to drink. And a lot of times they'll go to this passage. So turn to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30. I'm sorry, 31. <clears throat> Proverbs 31. It says in verse 1, the words of King Lemuel, <clears throat> the prophecy that his mother taught him, what, my son? 
And what? The son of my womb. And what? The son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. <clears throat> Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink or alcohol unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So they say, look, it says, let him drink. But it says right before that, it is not for kings. What are we? <laughs> we're royalty. We're we're. We, in, we are inheriting, we have an inheritance from the king himself that makes us crown princes. <laughs> We're royal. It says right here, if you're a prince, if you receive Jesus Christ and you are a prince, we inherit. We don't need, it says for those that live in misery. This is for the ones that are dead in their trespasses and sins. Those that are going to perish. Those that are on their way to hell. And then if you could take it two ways or there's medicinal purposes that alcohol has been used for. And there's all kind of other medicines today that people use when they're, when they need a painkiller or if they're in a hospital or things like that. And back in those days, that's what they used alcohol for, for medicinal purposes, strong drink. And of course it was an intoxicating beverage and it was something that God says to abstain from. It says in Proverbs 3, um, Proverbs 23 tells you what happens. Who hath woe, verse 29? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. This is when it ferments, because wine can also be grape juice. <clears throat> when it ferments... When it giveth its color in the cup, because then it changes color, when it moveth itself aright, the fermentation process, it says, at the last it biteth like a serpent, stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mass. They have stricken me, shall thou say, and I was not sick. They have bitten me, or be beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Why? Because addic it's, it's addictive. It's better to just abstain from it. What does the Bible say? Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Be wise. Abstain from it. So this king doesn't do that. And that could have been the reason why he died. Because he was unaware, <clears throat> and he, he was drunk, and he ended up getting killed. Who's that one guy that conquered the world by the age of 33? Alexander, Alexander the Great. I think at 16, he, he, was the, um, he conquered Macedonia. And at like 20-something, he conquered another large area, the Greek Empire. <laughs> And then by age 33, he conquered the known world. And he was so sad because he's like, there's nothing else to conquer. He was sad about that. So you know what he did? He had a big party and he invited all these leaders. And he drank with them. And he, got, he drank so much alcohol. And he got this other huge vessel of, of alcohol. And he drank the whole thing. And he drank so much alcohol that he went unconscious and fell into a coma. A few days later, he got sick, had a fever, and then he died. So the man that conquered the world was conquered by alcohol. <laughs> There's a lot to learn in that. Do you know that whenever you drink alcohol, your dandrites in your brain, some of them, dies every time. And you know what? Some of us. We need all the dendrites in our brain that we can. <laughs> Those are what connects the brain cells. I think I'm saying right, dendrites. That's right. Dandrite. Dandrite. 
dendrites. Okay. See, because I don't lose capoeira so too many. So, dendrites. That's the connect. So you know what? Let's say if these these guys is connected, but the, this part is gone. So now I gotta go somewhere else to come this way. Yeah. That's where you become slower. Too much punches in the head. <laughs> yeah, it's like getting punched in the head every time you drink. <coughs> yeah, you never heard when they say that someone is punch drunk? They got punched too many times in the head, so it's just like they drank too much alcohol. And they're talking to the guy who's disease, talking slow. <laughs> just abstain from it. Don't get involved with something so addictive and destructive. There's so many times I've talked to somebody or marriages or there's problems, and one of the people in the marriage was drinking, and it caused problems for the marriage. But I never did talk to somebody that says, man, you know, my husband, he started drinking. It's been such a blessing. It's been such a joy, you know. He drinks, and man, I don't, I've never had that. i never heard of that. I don't know of anything. Do you know there's more deaths caused by uh, alcohol than any other? In fact, all the rest of the drugs combined, more deaths from alcohol, whether it's traffic-related or health, cirrhosis of the liver, those kind of problems. It'll get you at some point. If you, if you drink a lot, it will be most likely the cause of your death. <coughs> Just stay for, this is the cause of this guy's death, and it was a cause of Alexander the Great's death. Don't let it be part of your death. So we see consequences. There's consequences for evil behavior, bad behavior, bad choices, wrong choices, foolish choices. Okay, next thing is chastisement. Verse 11. And it came to pass when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all the house of Beersha. He left not one that pisseth against a wall, because that's referring to a male, of his kinsfolks, kinfolks, nor of his friends. Ooh, even his friends had to go. This was a common practice in the ancient world and was exactly what Baasha did to Jeroboam in 1 Kings 15. Now, David didn't do that, and that was uh, an exception to what usually happened. But David didn't do that, and he showed mercy to, what's that guy's name? Mephibosheth. Verse 12, thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Baasha according to the word of the Lord, which he spake against Baasha by Jehu the prophet. You think maybe Zimri is going to be good, you know, because he's seen that Jeroboam messed up. And then, of course, this is what happened to Jeroboam. Then this is what happened to Baasha. I'm going to do good. No. In fact, he didn't reign. He didn't reign for very long at all. Seven days. <laughs> He said, I'm, I'm going to be the shortest one reigning. <clears throat> Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake against Baasha by Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Baasha and the sins of Elah, his son, by which they sinned, and by which they made Israel to sin. See, they sinned, and then they even made Israel to sin, in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. <clears throat> Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So in less than 50 years, the first two dynasties of Israel's kings had come to an end. And every member of their families have been exterminated. They had tremendous opportunity to influence the nation for God. They did not. God meant to make their doom an example to those who should live after, who should come after them and live ungodly. In fact, we could read this and know it's not, it does not pay to live ungodly. There's so many areas that's affected. I mean, your health is affected. Your career is affected. Your uh, relationships are affected. And ultimately, your relationship with the Lord is affected. And there's a lot of things that, I'm sure you could think of some. Okay, so we see we see consequence, chastise. That's why I said bad kings. I mean, it's, it's a chapter of bad kings, so everything's bad at, in this chapter. <laughs> There's not anything good. But, you know, you can read a chapter where bad things happen, 
and learn from that. Just like you can learn from somebody that did the wrong thing and you can choose to do the right thing because you learn by seeing. I think that people that are raised by, let's, let's say, parents that were ungodly can be godly because they can know that. I don't want to be ungodly because I don't want to have that kind of marriage. I don't want to have that kind of life. So we can learn by good example. We can even learn from bad example. I remember saying that when I was growing up. I said, okay, take note. Don't do that. <laughs> My father taught me a lot of good things, taught me how to work hard, taught me not to quit. He also taught me don't ever smoke ice. <laughs> that's how he died. Verse 12. Thus did Zimri. Oh, read all that. Yeah, okay. Verse 15. Oh, yeah. Next point. So I'm trying to keep with the C's, so this is a stretch. but So consequence, chastisement, commit suicide. So you got a C in there. <laughs> because of sui the word suicide, I wanted to make them all S, but it just didn't work out. And I wanted to go with P's, you know, and it just didn't work out. So I spent more, trying, more time trying to come up with the alliteration than anything else. <laughs> so this is a little stretch, but commit suicide. In the 20 and 7th year of Asa, king of Judah, did Zimri reign seven days in Tirzah. And the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri hath conspired and hath also slain the king. Wherefore, all Israel made Omri, the captain of the host, king over Israel that day in the camp. And Omri went up from Gibberthin, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Terzah. And it came to pass, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, <clears throat> that he went into the palace of the king's house and burnt the king's house over him with fire, and he died. He set the house on fire, then he was in it, and he died. I would think, man, I could have thought a whole lot better way to kill myself than that. But that's what he chose. So he committed suicide. Zimri. Zimri is one of the few suicides mentioned in the Bible, other, along with Samson, Judges 9, Saul, 1 Samuel 31, and Ahithophel in 2 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 19, For his sins which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the way of Jeroboam and in, and in his sin, which he did to make Israel to sin. Now, the, the rest of the acts of Zimri, all seven days of it, <laughs> and his treason that he wrought, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And, of course, we know that the book of Chronicles only mentions the southern kings. So th this is a book that is not in the inspired word of God. There's a, a record of it, but it's not part of the Chronicles in the Bible. But yeah, I'll remind you again. First and Second Samuel is chronicled in First Chronicles. First and Second Kings is chronicled in Second Chronicles, and it keeps track of the southern kings. So when you're going through this, it's a little easier because you're always you're keeping track of the southern kings <clears throat> only. Now we see conflict. The northern kingdom is going to be divided into two parts, so that's why I say conflict. See, if I went with the S's, I could have said separate. But Anyway, verse 23. Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Genath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people that followed Omri... <clears throat> prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Genath. So Tibni died, probably because Amri killed him. It doesn't say that, but we just kind of assume. And Amri reigned. In the 30 and first year of Asa, king of Judah, began Amri. It's still the same king of Judah. <laughs> the same one. And he was a pretty good king. And so how long he's reigning? It reminds me of the Steelers had three head coaches since the Super Bowl era. Oh, Cleveland had 25. <laughs> kind of reminds you of a similar analogy, yeah? <laughs> now we're just salty. We didn't make the playoffs. We're out. 
because of a conspiracy and because of the Jets and because of what's that quarterback's name that hates our guts? No, he used to play for the Ravens. Anyway, they lost. All they had to do was beat the Dolphins and we would have been in. We would have went to Buffalo and we would have beat them. <laughs> Sorry, Jensen, he out too, yeah, Jensen. High five. <laughs> There's a few teams that will soon be out, too. <clears throat> conflict. So there was a, a conflict between these two guys, and, of course, Amri prevailed, and so now he is the one reigning. In the 30 and first year of Asa, king of Judah, began Amri to reign over Israel 12 years. Six years reigned he in Terza, and he bought the hill of, he bought the hill Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver and built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill Samaria. And so now you see the history of the headquarters of the northern kingdom, Samaria. So if you ever have a, like if you're playing Jeopardy or something, and they say, you know, they, 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 have the, they get the answer first, you got to make the question, yeah. You say, um, the person, Shemer. You can say, the original owner of Samaria. <laughs> or however it goes. So that's how Samaria was started. The founder of Samaria. You can say, who is Amri? See, if, if you play Jeopardy and that happens. But Amri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. So he was the worst at the time. So, of course, you know, his son Ahab is going to say, I'm going to be more worse. <laughs> I don't want him to get that title. So Amri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and his might that he showed. <clears throat> are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Amri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab, his son, reigned in his stead. So we see now that. Amri dies, and now we're going to see, we're going to be introduced to a famous or infamous king, uh, Ahab. So there's something I was going to read here, if I can find it. Can't find it. Okay, so now we see corruption, the last C, the last section. Of course, that's because Ahab is going to be reigning. So we see the consequence, the chastisement for doing wrong. We see commit suicide, conflict, and corruption. In, and in the 30 and 8th year of Asa, 38 years. And how many kings we just seen there? How many we saw? Two, 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 two. Maybe seven. And this is the same one in, in the south. In the 30 and 8th year of Asa, king of Judah, be, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria. That's, of course, now the headquarters. So you know in the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom was called Judah, after the biggest tribe in the south. The northern kingdom was called Israel or Ephraim, and the headquarters in the north is Samaria. The headquarters in the south is, of course, Jerusalem. And that only happens after King Solomon, when it splits. Before that, Israel was the whole nation, with the headquarters being Jerusalem. Verse 30, and Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So he even outdid his father. 
He said, my father is worse than all the other kings. So you know what? I'm going to be worse than him. I'm going to be better than him, which means I'm going to be worse than him. <laughs> better in an evil way. Verse 31. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. He's saying as if that weren't bad enough to be following the ways of Jeroboam and following after and worshiping the golden calves, if that wasn't bad enough, he goes ahead and even takes it to the next step. He starts to work. See, the golden calves are something that, that Jeroboam just made up. Now they're going to start worshiping Baal, the Canaanite deity. And it came to pass as if it, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbel. I think Ithbel means like in Baal or with Baal. Why is like music, man? Like, I don't know if it's like that. Where was I? Ithbel. I think it means with Baal. The daughter of Ithbel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal. She was a Phoenician princess. And went and served Baal and worshipped him. And Baal was supposedly, according to what they believed, the god of the rain. So now in um, Lebanon, in that area where they worship, where Baal worship was really popular, they felt like, hey, in our land, you see how green it is? It's because we worship Baal, the god of the rain. So you guys down there in Judah and that part's in Israel, it's so dry because, see, our god, Baal, he provides the rain. That's why it's so green. And so it could have been Ahab and me, I thought, hey, you know what, we're going to worship Baal so we can get more rain because he's the god of rain. Hmm, not going to go so well in a couple of chapters. We'll see what happens. They're not going to get rain. In fact, we're going to see who's the God of the rain. It's Jehovah God. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, which is where they would worship Baal and Ashtaroth, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. That's how bad he was. In his days did Heel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. Now this is really interesting that this person built Jericho. Because look at Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Look at Joshua 6. See, this is what the Lord says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man, be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. He's basically saying that his firstborn and his, and his youngest son is going to be killed. They will be judged. Anybody that tries to build this, I mean, it's right here. So this guy is going to challenge that. Ah, that's not true. We serve, we, we serve Baal now. It's not a good idea that he did this. So in his days did he, the Bethelite, build Jericho, and he laid the foundation thereof in Abram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Jacob, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. In other words, they died in the foundation and in the gate, just like Joshua had said. It was a message to Ahab. 
follow the word. God, he, he, even though there, there was corruption, but all they had to do is turn back to the word. Because if he got that message, if he saw that, if this guy knew, oh, don't build Jericho. I'm sure when he started to build it or talked about it, somebody said, you know, there's a prophecy that Joshua said, anybody that tries to build Jericho, that his firstborn son and youngest son, like the oldest and the youngest, are going to be dead, in the, one in the foundation and one in the gate. I guess the foundation falls on them or the gate fell or whatever. That's what, those, that's what those verses mean. And that's what Joshua had said. And yet, he went ahead and defied God and defied the word of God. And what happened? He ended up being, I mean, severely chastised by losing his children. And then when Ahab saw that, all he had to do was see what God was doing or see what happened according to the word of the Lord and say, you know what? We got to turn back to God. That's it. That was a message. I saw this little video. You know, you have the short videos and this one person was an atheist. I don't know if it's true. Sometimes you don't know what's true or not. But he was challenging God and said, if God is real, strike lightning and lightning just strikes in the, in the video, you know. And he kind of freaked out. I don't know if that's true or not. But God doesn't even have to do that. God already said in his word, he that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God hath not life. And if people want to defy God and say he's not true and continue on, in their, um, in their trespasses and sins and live a, a, a life that is anti-God and not trust God and not believe in God and mock God and say things about God, well, then they're going to end up paying a price. And that's why we as believers, we need to be a witness. You know, we know that Joshua, the name Joshua is the Old Testament name for the New Testament name, Jesus. It's the same name. But just Joshua is in Hebrew. And in Jesus, Yeshua is in the New Testament, Greek. And we know that his name means salvation, that Jehovah will save. His very name means salvation. And so we see a message here that in from the book of Joshua, that understanding what Joshua says is the way for you to have salvation, Ahab. But to defy and go against, it's not that he didn't know. He saw this person. It's in the Bible because he probably knew this person. He probably was watching. The person probably talked to the king. Yeah, I'm going to build Jericho. What do you think? Yeah, I build him. I said, but you know, people telling me that, you know, there's a prophecy saying that my children are going to die. Oh, that's not true. We serve Baal now, the God of the rain. We want rain. Look how dry it is around here. Oh, it's going to get more dry pretty soon. <laughs> and however that discussion went, this guy went ahead and did it, and he ended up paying the price. And all Ahab had to do was see that and repent and turn back to God. I think sometimes the Lord gives people a message. I just talked to somebody the other day. In fact, I was sick, but when, when this when this happened, it was on Saturday, and I was feeling really horrible. But the person's daughter had called me, and in fact, the daughter listens to the, the program on the radio. And so that's how she, she knew about me, and then she found out that her father was in our program at one point. She called me up, and she said, would you be willing to talk to him because he's interested in turning his life, or he's interested in, he's homeless right now, he's messed up, but he's interested in, in possibly coming into the program or getting some help, coming back to church or wherever. And I said, oh, okay. So then I was feeling sick on that day. She had called me up and said, can you meet? I was like, oh. I thought, I got to go. I got to meet her. And so I said, okay, I'll be there. So I got ready, drug myself out of the house, came down here. It was about 1 o'clock Saturday. And then the, there was the guy. And he had the two, cho two children. They're adults. And I had this guy. And I said, hey, how are you doing? And he just was real cold. He was you know, I'm sorry, Pastor, you came down here. I'm thank you that you came down here and gave your time to come here. But you know what? Um, I didn't understand what she was doing, but I'm not, you know, I'm not wanting this. I'm not, I'm not, you know, and it was real, like, cold towards, I said, how's your relationship with the Lord? 
distant. I said, you know, I don't know how many chances you got. This may be your last chance. I said, but don't do to your children what my, what my dad did to me. Where they're going to find you dead on the street. And I just was like, when you're ready, give me a call. I wasn't in the best of mood because I was feeling sick anyway, but I said, aloha. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to in his last chance. And I really felt like that. Like, your children love you so much. I, I want to even say, you're even... You should be thankful they even care about you, all you put them through. But, yeah, I, I didn't have my compassionate um, mindset at, at that point when I, when I saw his attitude. First I was like, well, hey, how are you doing? I said, for real? I said, I said, if you like coming to the program, we we'll bring you in. Oh, no, 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 I don't need that. Could be your last chance. God gives people the opportunity. You know, people talk about the Canaanites and how a lot of people think it's the number one complaint about um, what they feel about God, that how God wiped out the Canaanites. And when people say that, I say, don't you realize that God gave them 400 years to repent? 400 years! Not like one year, 400 years, and they got worse and worse and worse. And their culture and their diseases and everything about, everything about them had to go. And that was God's call. God gives people a chance. Now, God gave Ahab a chance, and Ahab is going to, he is going to go down in infamy as a horrible king. And his wife, I, th I think her name is... Jezebel, no, her name is, I mean, her name means, I think, refuge, refuse or something, like garbage or something. <laughs> i got to double check that. But he marries this woman, and she, they're a perfect match, a match made in Hades, I guess you could say. <laughs> and we're going to see what happens. And, of course, you know who's going to be next on the scene next, next week, right? Elijah the prophet. <sighs> chicken skin <laughs> when you go to israel you go to the place you go to mount carmel and there's a statue you know a picture of of elijah but i mean i guess they don't know how he looked but there's a statue that took a picture behind the statue and then you're looking over that area where the prophets of baal fled you know it's so it's super cool anyway so joshua in the book of joshua pointed out the ways to salvation just like jesus said real plainly I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Ahab had a chance there. He could have led the nation into a great revival, but no, not one northern king ended up being good. And he ended up being one of the worst. I think there's going to be somebody else that said he did even worse. So he's going to even do one up of, of Ahab. So we'll see that later. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? With heads bowed.